very bored. It's still raining heavily. I'm stuck indoors with nothing to do and it's driving me crazy. Relax, you can still find something interesting to do. What? Sit on a sofa and daydream? It's no silly. Open a book. You can be transported to a whole different world. Set in any time period you choose. Look, I'm traveling through time right now. How? You never left the room. I didn't say I'm traveling through space. Come with me. No tickets, no time machines. Just jump in. What have you got there? The history of... History? No way, I'm not interested in history. You think you are not interested because you associate it with memorizing from a textbook and writing an exam. That's what it is, isn't it? History is much, much more than just a subject in school. It's all that's ever happened to make everything around you the way it is right now. That's what you said about physics the other day when I was wondering where the universe came from. Yes, science is all about the physical world around you. But what about people, communities, nations, their culture and way of living? Don't you want to know how it all came to be? I guess... Aren't you even a teensy bit curious about, say, how your great grandmother lived? Well, I do like to listen to all the stories my grandma tells me about her mother, what it was like to for her to grow up during a war and all that. But that's because I just love stories. So you say you are always interested in reading only story books? Absolutely. And if the story is set in the past, will you like to read it? Of course. And if every single thing in that story is true and describes what really happened, will you still read it? Why not? Don't you realize where I'm going with this? Oh, you just described the history book. Exactly. Alright, you got me. Go ahead, tell me about this one. I'll tell you. And our viewers. The history of India for children has been written in two volumes by authors Archana Garodia Gupta and Shruti Garodia. In the first volume, the journey begins from the very beginning. The formation of India from Pangaea, how humans came to India and the Stone Age. Then we are taken through a vividly detailed and engaging glimpse into the life of the Harappans. Next comes the Vedic period when the Vedas and Upanishads were composed. This section is a riveting read about the Aryan culture from their origin and government down to their food and entertainment. The book then takes us through the age of the epics, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata in a section aptly titled Gods, Humans, Kings, Princes and Everyone in Between. Then comes the birth and teachings of Buddhism and the dawn of the empires or Samarajyas. The book then introduces a foreign flavor and describes the meeting and intermingling of the Persian and Greek culture with the Indian culture, glimpses into our past through foreign eyes. The journey then progresses to the rise of the Mauryan Empire, the first to unite the subcontinent under a single rule, telling us gripping tales of Chandragupta Maurya, Chanakya and Ashoka.
After showing us a fascinating peek into the 500 year period after the decline of the Mauryan Empire, of a turbulent India with waves of invasions and ever changing kings and boundaries, we are transported to the kingdoms of the south. This is an enthralling, unputdownable section describing everything in the peninsular region from Neolithic agriculture to later technologies. Then come action-packed, jaw-dropping accounts of India's golden age, the two centuries of the Gupta Empire, the southern Sora, Bhartiya, Pallava empires, and the southern Renaissance, which gave us temple towns and living sculptures, and how India, without ever invading any foreign land, had a tremendous cultural influence on the rest of the world. We then whisk past tales of the Delhi Sultanate, Khilji and Tukluk dynasty to the great and magnificently opulent Vijayanagar Empire and Deccan Sultanate. Wow, that's quite a trip. This book seems to be a treasure trove of stories. Yes, I enjoyed it so much that I can't wait to get started on the second volume. What impressed you the most about this book? very difficult to relate the history of India with all the other parts of the world. It gets all muddled up in my head. But in this book, there is a section called What in the World Was Happening at the end of every chapter. This tells you important headlines from other parts of the world while the events of the chapter were going on in India. There is even a timeline chart at the end of the book that summarizes the history of the world in a nutshell. I wonder what it would have been like to walk into an ancient Indian house or village from one of these time periods and look around. Oh, the book has that covered too. It has sections called Peek into the Past and Slice of Life with very specific and minor details of the people's lifestyle, their mindset, the kind of relationships they had with each other and with nature, details that you won't generally find in textbooks. I'm starting to get curious to read it myself. You should. There is not even a single page in this book which is dry, boring or makes you feel like you're listening to a lecture. The progress from one era or chapter to the other doesn't seem forced at all but is very organic and free flowing. The best thing is, the style of the entire book is informal. Like you are chatting with a very wise and knowledgeable grandparent over a cup of tea. Well then, I am going to start right away. Bon voyage. Oh, and happy journey to you too.